Hello and welcome back to Overbooked. I'm Amanda and today we're going to talk about how you can have a eco-friendly reading habit. Today is Earth Day and so I wanted to incorporate the monthly zero waste videos that I do, tie it back to books this month since it's like the month for the earth. I wanted to tie it back to the reason why I do this channel, books, reading, etc. I love sustainability. I'm actually getting my master's degree in sustainability management right now and that's what kind of led me to want to do monthly videos. So if you guys haven't checked those out or if you're interested in that, I do monthly videos on zero waste tips and they're usually I try to keep them pretty easy and affordable. So it's kind of be on the lookout for that or go through my videos and you'll see them there once a month. So today we're going to be doing five easy ways, five ideas on how to be zero waste or earth friendly while reading. The number one way that I think that you can love your planet and love your books is to utilize your library. It's like the epitome of no waste. Um, there's just you borrowing a book, returning it, somebody else gets to use the same book, and it's glorious. I shouldn't say there's no waste. Um, obviously, there's gonna be receipts and stickers that they put on your books, but you know, overall, I think it's, it's a really great way to be more earth-friendly, and especially if you really love reading physical copies, which I do. I love reading a physical copy over listening to an audiobook or an ebook, so it's a great way to do that. And then I just want to throw that out there while we're on the topic of libraries. Library is also a great re resource because they have free digital apps to listen to books, read books. So if you guys haven't heard of the apps called Libby or Hoopla or Overdrive, that are all apps through your library that you can use for free to listen to audiobooks, watch movies. Um, I think you can check out magazines on Hoopla or one of them, ebooks too. So check those out. They're great resources for you and they're all free. Um, and they're earth friendly, win-win. So that leads me to my second point is in general, I think a great way to enjoy books is to use audiobooks and eBooks. There's no paper used in the creation of those materials. So you're definitely saving a lot of waste there. And if you enjoy those mediums to absorb books, I think it's just a great way to be earth friendly. Okay, so tip number three is to use used books. So there's a ton of great used bookstores out there. You can always go to, like when you're shopping on Amazon, you can always look for used books instead of new books. Uh, I love perusing used bookstores. They're just so fun and interesting. And I also just love having a book that somebody else has read because sometimes it's kind of interesting to see if they make little marks or where they like dog the page. Like it's just kind of cool and like fascinating like you're living through their reading experience as well and top of yours i don't know um so i think it's kind of cool and there's usually a lot of great um used bookstores around you um, i have a big chain that's a used bookstore near me it's called second and charles they don't just sell used books but i make sure to only look for used books when i go there and they're usually cheaper so you're saving a lot of money regardless just a great way to help the planet and your wallet Okay, tip number four. And I think this one is really fun and I've partaken in it quite often actually over the past year. And this is to participate in book swaps with your friends or family. And it's just a fun way to, you know, have your book, you read it, and then you can swap it with a friend, see what they have. They can give you some books and just like, it just leads to fun, open conversations about the books you guys are reading. And you know, you get to spread the love with the book that you purchased. And I just think it's a really great way to build that community among your friends or your coworkers or your family. It's just a really great way to read more books, distribute them more freely. There's a chick at my work who, um, she buys a lot of books online and she's lent me numerous amounts of books and it's been great. Also comes in a pinch when you can't get the book at the library and you don't wanna buy it, but your friend just so happens to have it. Okay, so my fifth and final tip is for when your book is at the end of its life or when you don't really want it anymore, you've already gave it to all your friends, they all have read it, they insisted you have it back, there's nowhere else you can, like you just don't possibly need it anymore. I think the best thing for you to do is to first check with your library to see if you can donate there or find other ways for you to donate it to either a school or you know a community center or there's a great organization that I have talked about on my channel before and it's called the Women's 
prison book project and they take book donations as well so there's always a great place that you can send your book if you no longer need it and it's not going to the landfill or the trash and then just like a last little tip because I know that some people don't really like using the library I know that some people don't really like using used books um, they personally love the feeling of having a new brand new book you know being the first one to open it like don't get me wrong I think that's a really great experience as well like when I was a kid going to Barnes & Noble with my mom, I like loved being the first person to own that book or open it up. But I do think that if you are one of those people who loves new books, I think instead of going to those big chains like Amazon, Barnes & Noble, so on and so forth, it would be great if you looked first at some local bookstores that you have. There's a lot of great things going on in your community that you might not know about. I'm sure most of you do if you're really involved in books that you probably know about all the local bookstores around you but if you haven't looked into that yet I highly encourage you do. I did a whole vlog on going to the different local bookstores in the Detroit area and they're really great. Um, a lot of them that I went to were female owned. One of them was a person of color female owned and they focused on nonfiction books surrounding social justice, women, people of color, all of that kind of stuff. And they focused on selling those books at their store. And it's just a great way to help your community, help that person keep their business going. And usually those places have great events going on. So book talks, book clubs, they bring a lot of writers to the community. Um, a lot of just great discussions and events going on there that you probably wouldn't be aware of if you just you know, took the time to look into them. And, you know, obviously buying books from them helps support them and put on those events for you. So definitely highly recommend doing that if you want to buy a new book. All right, that's all I have for you guys today. Um, I really hope that you take these things into consideration. I know right now during the whole COVID-19 situation, some of these tips might be hard to do. You know, for example, my library is closed right now. I, you know, you can't really go in, you can't pick up books. I actually did pick up a book that was on hold that I had that had just, it like came available right before the library closed and they were able to call me and I was able to do a safe socially distancing pickup. But of course, I'm still able to use their audiobook apps or their library apps like Hoopla, Libby, and Overdrive. So that's a great resource. And depending on your comfort level, you know, swapping books might not be the best option right now. I actually just did it with a friend. We did another like social distancing, safe swap of stuff. You know, I had my Clorox wipes and I wiped everything down. I gave her three books that I had and you know she gave me some food that she made you know there are ways that you guys can do it but obviously whatever you know makes you comfortable during this time keep that in mind as well you know your your health and safety comes before trying to make big changes in your life or trying to you know push the push the envelope mother earth will forgive you if you're trying to avoid getting the coronavirus I think you know you can still I, I think that a lot of people watching this video are probably huge book people anyways. So you probably have a lot of books on your shelf that you haven't had a chance to get to or read. And I would definitely just recommend that you take the time to read those first before you buy anything new. And again, a lot of the local bookstores are having books on sale on their online shops. So you can still support them before checking out Amazon and Barnes and Noble. And I'm not saying Amazon and Barnes and Noble are not you know, options for some people because local bookstores tend to be more expensive. So that's just not your jam either because you're in a difficult financial situation right now. Go ahead and go to Amazon, check it out. It might be the best option for you right now. Do whatever makes you feel comfortable. Everyone will be okay with it. That was it for today. I hope those five tips help and hopefully when we all get back into the swing of things, they'll be a lot easier to incorporate those tips. And if you guys have any other suggestions on how to be eco-friendly while reading, or if you have any um, sustainability or zero waste ideas or topics that you want me to look into, please leave them in the comments below and I'll definitely check it out and put something together. But otherwise, I hope you guys are all staying safe and healthy. Thank you for watching. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to my channel and I will see you guys next time.